I'd say me and mommy were more like sisters and yeah. you were more like my mom. I would constantly tell my parents, you love Mary more than me. Exactly. And you would kind of be like, you're I'd be proud like, but of you, Mary. You're proud Courtney of Courtney more, than, more me. than me. I did feel like my childhood to some degree had been robbed from me. And I turned into a very different person Definitely. because... I was no longer allowing myself to be in your shadow. Yeah. I would have panic attacks and nightmares mm. of you in that moment. Right. So when I then got the call that you need to like come up your sister, I don't know if she'll be here tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the To My Sisters podcast. I'm Courtney. And I'm Mary. And we are your online sisters and hosts of today's episode of the To My Sisters podcast. We are all about promoting the wellness growth and development of a community of sisters around the world. And today I am joined by... Mary Jo, my younger sister, the one and the only. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have the two my sisters book, then you have probably read my dedication, which is to Mary Jo, my younger sister. Um, and yeah, we have a very we have come a long way in our relationship with one another and you guys already know here on the two my sisters podcast we have spoken quite a lot and it comes up in various episodes about eldest daughter syndrome mm -hmm. myself and renee who is my usual co-host if you are new around here um are both eldest sisters and we thought why not actually sit down with our younger sisters to talk about a different and hear their perspective yeah. of being younger sisters to us individually but also um to just talk about the development of our sisterhood in this case not just being friendship but also biological sisterhood and us being you know people who have been raised together as siblings mm. um and so this is about to be real interesting yeah, our relationship How's is much like um, Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, just, you know, has its ups and downs, had its um, snap moments and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you're acting this way. I don't know me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> So Mary is definitely not the um, camera type. Do you want to introduce yourself, what you do, who you are? Um, I'm Mary. I am Hello. Courtney's younger sister. Ah. Um, what would what what should I say about myself? I really? mean, you're currently a student. Yeah, student. I'm yeah. um, in Northern England. <laughs> In not you wanted to bait out your campus. <laughs> uh, I study midwifery okay. and I'm in second year. Love that for you. Mm. Um, and it's an interesting road that you've been on actually to getting to become a student of midwifery and like delivering babies, even though you've always loved that since you were a kid. But you were originally studying religion, politics and society at King's, right. which even that has something to do with our sisterhood. Okay, so let's like just that. jump, you know jump into I mean? it then. <laughs> Let's just jump into it then. Talk to us about that. Why did our sisterhood dynamic af kind of affect the course that you took and having to then switch university courses and degrees? Mm. Okay, so me and Courtney were the our two siblings who grew up in the same house. We yes. have other siblings, yes. but we are the two that grew up yes, in, in our house. house. We have the same mom and same dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're the only siblings. You're yeah. the only sibling I have that our shares only the same. Siblings, yeah, yeah. yeah that um we have so we've grown up very close together for like all of our lives and our age difference is four years yeah so i'm currently guess. 21 and i'm 25 yeah so courtney being the great wonderful person that you all know is just a trailblazer and we're so proud of her she's done so many great things honestly you've done well you've done well you've done well <laughs> however however being the younger sibling to such a um pioneering um amazing person comes with its own struggles right. which i've voiced to you over the years yeah but um it's always been kind of like a not so much anymore because i have been very firm in that i am no longer courtney b i am mm. now mary to like our parents Is that how you felt? huh oh that yeah, you were courtney yeah, b. yeah 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 it's like courtney got an a where's your a courtney got an a star you got an a where's the star mm? do you know what i mean it kind of came like that for quite a while until I say when I started, when I chose to do midwifery, even making that decision, I remember I was at King's, which is obviously a Russell Group University in London, kind of like doing a similar course to what you'd done. Right. Like in the social. So why did you pick this? Huh? Why did you oh, pick no. the course? Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the very beginning. beginning. <laughs> okay. So when I was younger, I wanted to be a midwife when right. I was little, like reception year one, year two. 
my our mum is a nurse was a midwife as well and she was very like no you've you've had education in England go go do something big blah blah blah, stuff like that obviously as we grew up Courtney then went to Cambridge which is obviously doing something big what um (laughs) (laughs) just what our parents wanted they wanted us to do big things because they'd given us big opportunities Mm. and Courtney did that she followed she followed that course and she did the big things Mm. and so I felt like oh I have to go and do something just as big like I have to go and do something that makes me look intellectually smart I have to go and do some go to a university that is like quite well renowned stuff like that Mm. like I went through a phase where I wanted to go to Oxford because Courtney Mm. went to Cambridge Mm. and then I remember I don't know if you remember but the day before the Oxford applications Mm. um I think I was in the the way our house is set up is Courtney's room was opposite um our bathroom and I was in the toilet or you were in the toilet somebody was in the toilet (laughs) and the other person was in Courtney's room and Courtney was like to me, have you done your Oxford application? I was like, no. Yeah. She was like, are you what? Like the mm. whole plan was like, like you the whole, gonna go you're going to go to Oxford. I had the grades. I had the personal statement. I had mm. all of it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. Mm. And I remember you didn't ask me anything after that. Mm. You were just like, okay. Then the next day, our dad, who is a very intellectual person, yeah, 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 he was like, so have you sent your Oxford application? I was a sheep. <laughs> I was, I was silent. And I said, sorry daddy no <laughs> i remember oh my god i was scared i was even i was even wanted to call mommy or somebody please somebody come, come into the room because you. i don't know what's going on right now <laughs> so i was like no sorry daddy i haven't sent it he was like what i was like yeah and he was like your sister and as soon as he said your sister i was like daddy no mm. th- this is where it stops now mm. i don't no offense to you but i was like i don't care about what she's done anymore yeah i don't it's yeah. my life i'm yeah. gonna do what i want with it yeah um and i think he got a little bit of respect for me in that moment not you. which was great <laughs> not you advocating for yourself love you know, that i know um and then obviously i told mommy and she was like she doesn't she didn't really care not so much she didn't care but me and mommy's relationship is very much so like in You're my closer. head we're very close we're kind yeah. of like if i talk to somebody and um, like about our relationship dynamics when we were younger maybe like 16 or so i'd say me and mommy were more like sisters and yeah. you were more like my mom right in my head okay. where it was like i had to report to you where you going what time you coming back oh who are your friends who are you with blah blah whereas with mommy it'd be like mom i'm going out what time will you be back oh maybe around nine okay see you then hmm. no call no nothing but yours would be like where are you if i'm out a quick message or like when you're going to be back yeah. do you get what I mean so I felt like I was reporting to you a lot more and because you're more of on the academic side it felt like my grades and stuff if I told you it would be like more like a mum's response of like oh well remember a level results I got a a b mm-hmm. and the first thing you said was why did you get a b is that the first thing <laughs> I said <laughs> yeah. I remember I was in the living room looking in the mirror and the first thing you said was why did I get a b is and that I what I like, said? Yeah. Is that how you're framing the situation? Is that what I actually... It's what you said. Okay, it's fair, fair. <laughs> fair enough. No, but fair, it was... My initial reaction, for example, if one of our cousins was to get um, AAB, would automatically be, oh, so like, what did you get in... What did you get a B, in? B in? You know what I mean? It's, it's a natural thing, but because it came from you yeah. at the time, it was kind of like, oh... Are you saying that I I I did not perform? Do well, right. You know, what I mean, I did not perform right, right, well right. enough. Sorry about that. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I don't really remember what I was saying. Um, in terms of how did you go from Kings to midwifery? Right. So I went to Kings to study religion, politics, and society, and right. my plan was to become an RE teacher. Right. Um, much to the dismay of our father. I mean, it's something that you did like. Yes. Yeah, and I think you. Did you do you feel like you picked it because I did something in the social sciences? Yeah, but also when we were younger, you and dad used to have a lot of intellectual, intellectual conversations. conversations in the living room. Conversations which I felt I couldn't really contribute to because not so much I didn't know things about it, but more so I didn't really care. Yeah, it wasn't your interest. Like I didn't political conversation stuff like that. It wasn't like talk to me about children, talk to me about like education stuff like that. I would be I would have conversations about that. Political landscapes and such like that. It wasn't really of my interest. Right. So yeah, I said I'm going to go and do a humanitarian degree. Mm, a humanities um, degree. Sorry, a yeah. humanities degree. Go and do something that I'm interested in which was which is religion. I'm yeah, quite interested in religion. That's true. Interested in like the dynamics of religion to do with politics stuff like that still am even though I don't study the degree anymore but I'm gonna go and do it at like a Russell Group University go and do it in somewhere that is like notable stuff like that yeah. to like make our parents proud right and to give like a 
Russell Group is basically like the UK equivalent of the Ivy League. Like it's the top universities in the country, kind yeah. of prestigious academic institutions. But to add, I still do go to a Russell Group university. <laughs> she does. But um, just not a that. Just a, just a different <laughs> university now. So um, I was like, okay, I'm going to go and do this in a Russell mm. Group university. And then I did it for a year. I loved it. I did. But I was like, why am I doing this? Mm. It came to, I was like, at the time I was talking to Faustina, who is a very good friend of mine. Mm. And she was like, why are you doing it? I was like, bro, at this point, I don't even know. Like, mm. what am I going to do after this? The right. only route that I saw for myself was becoming an RE teacher, which is a great career. career. But it wasn't something that I wanted to do. I always knew that I had something like a love for kids. The 18 year old kids, maybe not. Maybe not the 16 either. It's more so like children, children as in like babies reception kind of age group is what i more draw towards mm. even at church like people always say it to me like i'm very good with kids Cheers. yeah you always so I, and i've all, i always have been so i was like what do i actually want to do with my life and mm. i remember having a conversation with mom, my mom with our mom sorry it's okay um, I was, <laughs> 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 yeah i remember having a conversation with mommy about what i wanted to do and she was on it she was like yeah i always knew the degree you were doing like what even is that blah 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 i was like okay calm down for a First second all, relax yeah i'm still doing the degree i'm still at king so maybe we could like slow down for a second but she was like go and pursue midwifery i was like how on earth am i did we get back here hmm? yeah how did yeah we get back here? how did we get back to this like i've been saying it since i was young remember i wanted to be a doctor i wanted yeah, to be a midwife i wanted, wanted to, to OB, do something OB, to do with OBGYN. like oh yeah i wanted to be an obstetrician gynecologist i wanted to be a pediatrician and then it all switched because you got into Cambridge and you went to do mm. that. And I saw how much respect you got from our family. I saw how proud dad was of you. I saw how, do you remember when uh, mommy called auntie and was like, oh, Courtney's gotten into Cambridge. And then my aunt was like, oh my gosh, I wish she was my daughter. I, oh, she's, I'm so proud of her. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously you are her daughter, but the way she but was saying so it was- it's so funny how you remember these like particular things because mm. I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. These are things yeah. that like kind of like made a mark on my head. Yeah. I was like, I need this kind of- Validation. Validation from people. And I, I, it's a bad thing. I'm praying about it. We need deliverance. <laughs> but I <laughs> thrive off of people like being proud of me. Right. Like, I kind of thrive off of you've done well. I'm proud of you. The affirmation. The affirmation. Yeah. My love language is our words of affirmation. Yeah. You know, if you know me, you know, I love, I love a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, your earrings are nice. Thank, Thank you. you. They're from Primark. You know what I mean? Like I love, I love stuff like that. I love compliments and stuff. Mm. Um, But I love even more compliments from our, our family because mm. it's like, oh my gosh, they're actually proud of me. And coming as the youngest daughter, because not only am I after Courtney, I am the only other one out of the two yeah, of us. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like I have somebody else to be like, the, oh, the well, they, yeah, me. they didn't do this or blah, yeah. blah. It's just, you either did it or you didn't. Right. Because there's only A and B. Right. Do you get what I mean? I remember on GCSE results that we were in the living, not GCSE results, there, a few days before GCSE results, they, me, you and dad were in the living room. And I was like, I was, I was shaking over my results. Mm. I was like, I need to have done well. And then dad was like, why do you have so much pressure on yourself for this? And I was like, cause either I don't do well and it's Courtney was the anomaly and she's done like amazing and I'm just to the wayside or I do do well and it's just, I'm just as good as Courtney. It's never gonna be a thing of I've exceeded her. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I just need to make sure that I'm like on par, which I did, mm. but- I think you even did better than me maybe yeah you did she did yeah. she's trying to be caught she did go on <laughs> yeah i was like i need to just make sure that like i'm on par with you i can't do anything that like pushes me or makes me seem like i could be less than you do you know what mm -hmm. i mean because i felt like a lot of respect came from all of the accolades that you had right do you get what i mean right. and so if that's all that i had seen because we don't have a third sibling well we have other siblings but in our house we don't have a third sibling that's all that i could kind of base on base our parents love our parents like pride and stuff right. like that off of right so i was like i need to go and do the same thing obviously i didn't apply to oxford or cambridge which was kind of like the, my first step in you know the rebellious mary <laughs> and then i was like i'm applying to midwifery and only i only told mommy and i made sure she did not tell anybody, anybody. yeah like our mum is a chatterbox <laughs> she is <laughs> Shout out to you, mommy. Love you, you are. I love you, but she is a chatterbox. And I remember she was in bed. She came back from a night shift, and I was like, "Mummy, you're not 
telling anyone anybody this is a me and you thing because if i don't get in i don't want it to be like well she didn't get in so she just has to stay right but i and if i did get in i wanted to be able to make the choice by myself um and then i did get in i got into another russell group university i got into a few universities and i told my mom our mom and she went i told you and i was like but you told me huh did you told me before yeah 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 you actually see this is what i mean about the remembering thing Mm. but you were told me very much after you had decided Mm. right and it was you did ask me about um like what you should do and stuff and i think one thing you have always done even as we like say this um tell this story one thing you've always done is ask for my advice Mm. but i think this was one of the first times you had come to me very much decided Mm. like it was more so like you were saying Mm -hmm. the story with our dad you were telling me what you were going to do rather than kind of asking me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that transition that you made and that decision you made for yourself was very much like a key moment for you Mm -hmm. kind of getting your groove, like, and and reclaiming your own independence Mm -hmm. and really like, I wouldn't even say differentiating yourself from me, but just being like, you know what, I'm actually done living in comparison because it's something I've always seen Mm. like between us and I think it came out a lot more when it came to education have you realized that we like maybe because we're the only two siblings yeah but it's like we've always been compared not I've been compared to you academically but you've been compared to me like character wise character oh Mary so this or yeah literally and so this is the next segment of Mm. the chat that I want to talk about which is comparison Mm. because you've definitely been compared to me in the areas of like academia um work stuff like that but when it comes to things like beauty standards um character things like even being a good child Mm. you were definitely the golden child in that in that yeah Yeah. there you go see um in the (laughs) sense that like I was always called the rebel Mm. and not in the best way like the rebel was very much for example, one of the biggest things that I kind of held on to, which caused a bit of friction in our relationship, mm-hmm. not necessarily between us, but you played a key part in the friction I had with our parents mm-hmm. was I was the child who got the physical discipline and yeah. you were never touched. Yeah. Right. Like, I think there was only one time <laughs> that you were beaten which and you, you were beaten very badly, but it was my was, fault was your exactly fault. because <laughs> I snitched on her because I wanted to see her get punished. I so I remember I so went bad. to your room afterwards and I was just looking at you. I was like, like literally, how can what? I betray you like this? Yeah, see, this is the thing, but you see trauma, trauma, oh because my in my head, it was just kind of like, how come all of my life, like maybe I remember there was a time in primary school. I don't even know why that I still have this deep memory where um, like uh, there was a day before school and something went missing from my mom or something. Mm. I don't know if it was money or like an item and she, and I was less than 10 years old and you were even younger than that. And then um, she was kind of like, no, you were even still in a pram. And she was like, oh, um, who, Courtney, you took this thing from me. And I was like, no, I didn't. Like, and she was going in to the point where she was about to physically beat me for lying. And then you were like, I took it. And then her whole like disposition completely changed. And in my head, I was thinking, huh? Wow. Like, how did that, how did that diffuse you so quickly? How do you have this much tenderness towards marrying? Like I was saying, like, I was a kid that because, okay, I've always been very outspoken. You guys know me here on the podcast. (laughs) I've always been very outspoken. I've always had an opinion and I've never been afraid to share it yeah. um and like you were saying like having political debates with my dad telling people my mind has always been my jazz and so it used to ruffle feathers especially in a you know being part of the diaspora being children of immigrants we're kind of raised in a culture where it's like children don't speak back to adults yes yeah. you, you do as you are told and you leave it there you 100%. don't reason and I was always a but what's the reason like I'm always asking why and stuff like that and, and I, I wasn't like that you were not like that Mary was just okay you said that I'm gonna do it that's it and you've always been quieter mm. than me our, our personalities are very different very and so you're, even you're though we're int- actually quite similar we are very if similar. you do like the enneagram test and stuff like that we're always exactly the, the same. same yeah it's just it manifests quite differently yeah. in our approach to things because i've always been quite like i, I was about to yeah. say grah, grah, like. <laughs> <laughs> you're I've too always, known yeah like you're i'm too, too known. known like mm. i'm one of those people who just like no it can't be like that mm-hmm. and then mary would just be like maybe we should think about Let's doing this a bit approach different. it from all everybody. of the body do you get what i mean yeah. like it's a lot more soft it's mm. a lot more and so i think as a child in that environment you were kind of looked at as 
Courtney, why can't you be like Mary? Mm. Why can't you just follow instructions? Why can't you, you see, just be quiet? But you see, I felt like growing up, I had to be like that because you weren't. Right. I felt like, let me, no offenses. It's going to be offensive. No offenses. But I felt like our parents, in from the way that I was looking at it, I felt like our parents had a hard time with you. Yes, So I definitely. felt like I couldn't give them a hard time. Right, right, right. So I was right. like, they've had it. Like, yeah. like they've, they've, They've shouted, they've yeah. beat, they've disciplined, they blah, blah, blah. So let me just be, yeah. let me be the one who they don't have, have to do to, much yeah. And with. you definitely were. Yeah. And I think it, in my head that then framed you as Mary is the golden child. Yeah. But it's so interesting to then hear in your head mm-hmm. because of my performance, it was like Courtney is the golden child. Yeah. And that brought a bit of enmity between us mm-hmm. because it's like, I would constantly tell my parents, you love Mary more than me. Exactly. And you would kind of be like, you're I'd be proud like, but of you, Mary. You're proud Courtney of Courtney more than, more than me. Than me. And that yeah. was challenging. Exactly. That was really challenging. And I it made the, us not like each other. And this is the thing. So I think for me, even before like starting TMS, it was really important for me to kind of address my relationship with you. Mm. And so because you are four years younger than me, you started uni, I think, once I had finished. Yes. I was done. Yeah. And then you started. And yeah. I had moved back home. <laughs> And so <laughs> our mummy had moved out and mom, my our mum had moved out well she was still living yeah, with us yeah. like for a couple of years and then my mum had moved out and then it was us living mm-hmm. together by ourselves um as two you know coming of age 20 something late teen 18, yeah. um and so it was just it was important for us to kind of have this conversation of okay cool I had kind of used going to university as an escape from Mm. home like once Mm. I went to university I was rarely ever back Mm. like if I was coming back to London I would never really go home Mm. I would be doing something in London and I would rather stay at a friend's or a hotel before I'd actually come home right and if I did come home it was simply to sleep and then leave and I barely spoke to my family Mm -hmm. like it was very much a I'm gone Mm -hmm. this was my way out of the false responsibility Mm. the hostility between me and my parents um I got to just start my own life and really reclaim my time because if you have listened to the episodes we've done in regards to eldest daughter syndrome it does come with this immense feeling of responsibility Mm. and when you were saying you know it felt like you were my mom and you you were reporting to me it wasn't necessarily that like I was I was trying to have a control but I saw that there was a there was a relaxation our parents had in raising you that they didn't have with me. Mm. And then in my head, it was like, well, then who's given her the discipline? Who's actually, you know, making sure that she's okay? Like Mm. everyone has kind of left it to me. And I think our parents, this might thought, our parents had that approach of being friendly Mm. with you. Like our mom in particular had this approach of being friendly with you because they knew I would do the parenting. Mm. You know, like I would be the one, because I used to be the one who picked you from school and stuff like that. And it's no please before anybody gets the wrong idea and comes out our sideways our parents are the most amazing parents honestly ever. The best and the parents. reason why I was kind of not left to parent Mary but I had to step up to parent Mary was because our mom was working and studying at the same time whilst we were very young children On, like, when she had yeah. separated from our dad and so it left us a lot to do like yeah. it, because she was already ca- burning the candle at both mm-hmm, ends mm-hmm. I think I've told this story before or it's in the book around how like my mum would wake up at like 3 a.m and finish her days at like 11 p.m and do it all again for like mm-hmm. days and mm-hmm. days and days I just think that working. added to why I wanted to be so like good good yeah because yeah. I was I knew it wasn't fair yeah on you, like exactly. all that was being put on you so I was like okay I'm just gonna be like quite quiet and exactly. stuff like that because our parents aren't there yeah and you're not my you're not my mom yeah yeah so I think that that unfairness was something that really sat poorly with me mm. like I did feel like my childhood to some degree had been robbed from me Understandably. and it was very much I blamed I wouldn't say I directly blamed you but then it was kind of like I felt the blame okay I, felt the blame. I blamed her <laughs> so- <laughs> But it's, I mean, I wouldn't say I blamed you in the sense that obviously you didn't ask to be yeah. born. If anything, I was the one who asked for you to be born because I wanted a younger sibling. Yeah. Um. And like, yeah, anyway, that's a whole story for another day. But I definitely saw my chance to go and get my undergrad and go to university and live by myself as an opportunity to escape. So I kind of like abandoned you in Do those you three years. you remember when you came back and I yeah. had gone through, you know what? I posted on my story the other day, a few weeks ago. Sorry. I want, sorry, I want like... I want to tell my testimony so so and so. So I'll I'll touch on like a few like a little bit of like what had happened. Okay, cool. But um when you came back from uni, I remember we were in your bed after you had found out what had happened 
when you were at uni and I said to you, I feel like you just abandoned me when you went to uni yeah. and you left me in the house. Cause at the time, both of our parents were living in the house yeah. and their relationship wasn't the best. No. And I felt like I was just the middleman right. between them. And obviously when you were in the house- That was the role that I played. But not even, I feel like we both could play it. Oh yeah, hundred percent, but me more so than you. Mm, I felt like I did, I was, I don't know. Cause I feel like I shielded you. <laughs> Like I remember there were things there were things that would happen and I would be the one who was responsible of being like Mary, make sure Mary's okay, make sure Mary doesn't see, make sure that Mary's not affected by this. And it was like, okay, but I'm seeing it, I'm affected by this. Who's taking care of it? I hear me? that, but then you know when oh shield Mary, make sure she doesn't see, make sure this, make sure that and then you left. Yeah. And it was like you left the next day, it was eyes you. open. Yeah. Just like what yeah. is so what that's what i'm saying before on. i left yeah, it was yeah. very much so that mm-hmm. was kind of the role that yeah, i played yeah, yeah. but then once i left it was like all on you all I wasn't on me and anything. i was just like what is going yeah. on and then my mental health um kind of took a took a, t- a turn for the worst mm. some may say mm. and when you were in uni it's we didn't talk much, much no. at all when she was actually in uni but maybe like once every month or something like that if that yeah so it's not like i could tell her about it and the way our family is it's very you don't tell outsiders about what is happening you don't this is family business family yeah. business stays with family that's it like and not even just extended family family as in mom dad mary Courtney. Yeah, that's, that's it. it that's who it stays with yeah. so i felt like i had no one to talk to at all and i know obviously you went through that as well yeah. when we when you were in the house but at the time also the kind of person I am I don't have many friends right and right, I right. don't really socialize that yeah. well I'm quite a quiet person I yeah. can stay in inside for like a week and not go out yeah. and just be on my computer be yeah. on my phone Whereas I had my friends yeah and you I had go, friends yeah. and stuff like that I genuinely the only person that I had at that time was, was God yeah and Faustina yeah that's Faustina it. was her best friend Faustina was my best friend still very close friend yeah. but that's those were the only that was it that's all I had so I felt like I've been abandoned and then a lot of the time because I was the only one in the house when things would happen I felt like it was my fault Mm. so then I'd be like "Mm, maybe if I wasn't here this wouldn't be happening kind of thing which led to like a cascade of like suicidal thoughts um depression stuff like that think like just an unfolding of events which was quite bad in like at the time like led to me being in hospital and stuff like that but I felt like when you came back and you found out about it all and I told you I felt like you had abandoned me it was kind of like a turn in our relationship massive a massive turn in our relationship because I was just I was done being this amicable oh everything's all right oh you can do anything to Mary and Mm. oh Mary can hear anything she just won't say anything Mm. I was just done with it I was like this is my life and I'm yeah. like, it's it's about time I live it. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. That was a uh, ooh, 28. Do you remember it? Oh. <laughs> Mary, don't be, be freaking for real. <laughs> How could I ever forget that? <laughs> so, okay. So I went to university in 2015 um, and you were what? Maybe 14 years old. Yeah. And um, it was very much, uh, like I said, a, a breakaway for me. It was, I'm going to go and discover who I actually am, what I actually like, um, and like bun my family, basically. I'd, mm. I'd hate every single last one of them. And um, it was it was 2018. I just finished my last exam and like term was over. I had finished my degree. I didn't know my grade yet or anything like that, but I had finished my degree and I was coming home. So I remember I brought all of my stuff down from university and I, Mary wasn't home at the time you were at school. And this was like, you were getting ready for prom kind of season. This is giving me major PTSD. I don't know, like flashbacks or something. <laughs> Do you not want me to talk about No, 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 okay, it's cool. fine, it's fine. So, I've never heard it from your side. Yeah, That's oh fine. yeah, okay. Yeah. So so I would just come back from uni and I was dreading it. Like mm. I was very much dreading the fact that, okay, I decided that post-university I was going to start a business um, and that meant that I was going to live at home mm. um, just to, you know, save money and mm-hmm. kind of find my feet in this whole entrepreneurship journey. And I moved I, I moved all my stuff back home and Mary wasn't home because you were at school. Mm. And and this was before she went to uni. So she's at school. Sixth form days. Sixth form days. Um, like I said, she, she's preparing for prom. So we're about 60, you are 16 yeah, yeah, years yeah. old. And then um, my, 
I come home and my mum's lying in bed and she calls me into her bedroom and she's like, oh, hey, like, how's uni? How's everything gone? How are you feeling? I was like, I'm good. She's like, Courtney, I need to talk to you about something. And whenever she comes with that, Courtney, I need to talk to you about something, my heart just goes, what? Yeah. Like, what is it? I know it's going to be a deep conversation. So I sit down and then she she kind of walks me through. She was looking for prom dresses with you and she took you shopping. And then she was like, um, I'm wondering why is... My our mom is a fashionista okay? to the core. She is a, a classy your, lady. Your shoe must match your dress. Dress uh, must your, match your bag. Let like, your shoulder be out. Literally, Come on, show them our that mom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so you can Shout imagine prom you. dressing with it was her gonna was, be. I was like, yeah, yeah. So you were dreading it, yeah, very much. And you so, know, and they nobody in our family knew. That I had self harmed at right. this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no one, like nobody. Mary had kept this thing completely to herself. And you know, when you look at that, mm-hmm. I had been self harming for about a year, and, and no one had noticed. Yeah, but the thing is, though, and I, I was very secretive about yeah, it. Yeah, it was me as well. Like, it, but mm, but yeah. at the same time, somebody should have noticed that mm. something was off. But obviously, I wasn't living of at course, home, yeah. and then you know, there everyone else is going through their stuff. Yeah, so we kind of have this conversation that i took mary prom shopping she you know doesn't want to wear short sleeves she doesn't want to show herself to me anymore and our house our culture (laughs) in our home extended family uh, close family even though we're quite private when it comes to things like just naked in yourself in front of someone i will dry myself in the bathroom and just walk walk around naked it really doesn't matter like what you were saying about you talking telling me you didn't apply to oxford because you're in the toilet and i'm in the bathroom we had that household where it's like if you're going to the toilet the door's open like no one cares we're very free and mary had suddenly switched off from doing that and she's more free than i am like i used to be more of the oh don't look at me yeah yeah, my breast she was just like yeah here i am um (laughs) literally (laughs) hi what's up um and i love that about uh, um us but you had stopped Mm -hmm. and my mum had obviously noticed that drastic change because you were so friendly with her it was kind of like why does mary now want to hide herself yeah prior to courtney coming back from uni i had shared a bed with our mum for like a long time so she sees me like all the time all the time yeah and that i think that also helped your closeness but you were very much a Mm mummy's a mummy's girl and then um that all changed and my mom was like so I asked her what was going on and then she confessed to me that she had self-harmed and then she showed me her scars and then I broke down I must have come home quite soon after, soon after that, that because I was I still sat on my mom's bed and like red yeah. eyes and she was like don't tell her I told you and I was like how I can told I not, her not to, to tell, tell you <laughs> yeah but <laughs> mom's a chapter box so <laughs> but then she was like don't tell her I told you and it was like I was sitting there with my eyes read and I was genuinely grieved like I was yeah. heartbroken and I think my heartbreak was this was what I had gone through mm-hmm. right dealing with mental health issues mm-hmm. dealing with kind of cries for not just cries for help but like depressive episodes mm-hmm. suicidal thoughts suicide attempts um I I'd never really got to the stage of like manifesting it through self-harm mm. but I definitely could understand yeah. to a degree and empathize with where your mindset was Mm -hmm. and I felt that same grief of one of the things that I've always tried to do was have transparent conversations so that the people around me didn't have to go through what they had gone through and then it registered in my head damn Mary's going through what I went through and I'm really failing as a sister yeah I remember I had a conversation with you about just fasting forward from that when you wanted to start to my sisters yeah I remember we had the conversation I was like Courtney sometimes I feel like you're trying to be a sister to everybody else but you you haven't been a sister to, to me. me yeah and that was hard yeah like that was really one of the things that cut me so so deep and made me want to re- work on our relationship um and i think that like not to be hyper spiritual or anything but i think healing our relationship and investing in that before starting tms mm. actually really blessed tms for success mm. on my part mm. because mm. it was kind of like you don't want to come on this camera and be a hypocrite, hypocrite yeah. you don't want to so try and reap seeds where you haven't mm-hmm. sown and if you're trying to have a digital sisterhood community you're trying to have a sisterhood community you actually have to be good at sisterhood right. and it's not just friendship mm-hmm. your relationship with your actual sister needs to testify of sisterhood exactly and so um and of the things you're going to talk about and stuff and that was a responsibility i took really like seriously mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. i realized mm-hmm. that i was placed in your life in this position yeah. for a reason um and 
you were now going through, well, you had always been going through your own stuff, but now you are actually vocal and showing it and asking yeah. for help. So what happened after our mum told us that and I cried, I remember that very day I had a radio interview and I went to the radio interview and they're literally looking at me like, so tell us about your story. My name's Courtney, I'm 23, <laughs> I'm 21, life's good. And everyone in the room was looking at me. I looked so disheveled as well. Everyone was looking at me like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong? And I was like, genuinely, like, it felt like they had told me the person I loved most had died. Yeah. Like it was, I was, I was in shock, grief, all of it. I remember I came home very soon afterwards, still in my school uniform and stuff. And I saw you on the bed and Courtney is not a public crier. I am not an emotional. She- I've been <laughs> saying that to you people. This is the perfect um, yeah. person who can attest. I can count on my hand to memory how many times I've seen Courtney cr- like cry. cry, maybe like a tear yeah. here and there, but like cry. I was like, damn, <laughs> mommy, you told <laughs> she her. Knew exactly when she came. She knew as soon as she came in, my mom had told me. Yeah. And, and I remember I tried to be very like, hey, you're yeah, right. Yeah, literally. Blah, blah, all of this stuff. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh, oh gosh yeah like, and and yeah. yeah so that night when we went to sleep we were sharing a bed and then we we're kind of like top to toe mm-hmm. and then I was kind of like just talking and I was like Mary um you know you can tell me any like why didn't you tell me that you were going through stuff I would have wanted to be there to help you and that's when you were literally like you abandoned me and you said something which really stuck with me um and I was gonna write about it in the book but then I kind of as I was writing it I was getting I felt like it was something that I was still really working through Mm. and it it did, it hit me, not to say it hurt me, Mm -hmm. but it hit me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was just like, you know, you were just like, why would I have told you? You're not my friend. And I was like, (laughs) S-O-S, I think (laughs) I'm passing away. I remember when I told you that I had spoken to Faustina about it and stuff. And you were like, why would you tell her and not not tell me? And you were like, you're not my friend. And I was like, I can even feel myself getting upset, like not upset, like teary. It was very much like I have failed. And I think that was one of the moments in my life where if anybody asked me, have you failed at anything? I'd say that was it. That Mm. was like a moment of failure for me. And that summer, um, obviously I just finished uni. So the summer after graduation, um, you were at home with your summer break. And I just remember like, some days would be good mm-hmm. and then some days would be fighting yeah and then you'd be crying and i'd because i would want you to open up in certain yeah, ways i and- feel like at that point because you had found you had found christ mm. at that point and i i've always been a christian but i had it wasn't a personal relationship, relationship with god for me at that point so it's kind of like you know when the bible says obviously we're christian so i'm just going to say it from like that perspective but when the bible says oh you're made new in christ you're a new being in christ and stuff like that all I had in my head was the Courtney that yeah. we just fought all of our life. So now all of a sudden Courtney switched and she's like, let's be friends. Talk to me. Open up. I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I came back from uni very much having done. So in that time where I had kind of abandoned my entire family, um, I had found faith and I was really going. I think that's when my glowing and growing mm. journey really began of really like, healing yeah talking working on myself crying praying Mm -hmm. um and kind of growing spiritually emotionally um and it it did wonders for me but I very much came back after those three years a very different person I used to be like a very horrible person to be around especially towards like 16 17 18 I was not you mm, no 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 if you guys could just rewind I was just sitting here like this when you said it so I used to be tough to be around but I think I think you understood yeah. in the sense that I was very hurt. Yeah. Like I was, and I had no one yeah. to kind of go to. And then it didn't help that like other people, for example, we were talking about how um, we're the only two like full mm-hmm. biological siblings we have, but we have like six, yeah, six of other our siblings. siblings. Um, and they had all started to come into my life mm-hmm. around the same time. And it was also very overwhelming mm-hmm. to then have to kind of start building these new relationships. And you had, you were building relationships with our cousins and stuff like that. Yeah, like, like I was, and stuff. I was doing a lot mm-hmm. of like trying to, just a lot of people coming into my life and a lot of people expecting stuff. And then on top of it, I'm trying to navigate going to university and just 
hormones mm, and stuff. Mm, mm. So I was, my mental health was deteriorating. I was working at it. It was a lot. And that meant that the pe- the person that I was at home was very different to the person I was at school or at work. Yeah, I remember having um, a conversation with you about that as well. Yeah. It's like, I feel like you're showing one side to everybody else. Like you're this happy, 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 happy person outside when you're like with your friends and stuff like that. And then as soon as you come home, you turn that off yeah. and it's like, you're being horrible to yeah. us. Yeah. But I hated you guys. Exactly. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so there was that. Exactly. You see, it's um, hard to see it from like the that other perspective. Because in my head, it's like, but what did I do for you to right, hate me? Right, right, right. Exactly. So I, I got it. I love you guys, your my parents and stuff like that. Yeah. But I got why you hated them. Yeah. Like I completely understood it. Yeah. To, ex- uh, to an extent, I felt it too. Yeah. But then in my head, it was like, but why do I hate but you? But why do you hate me? Yeah. And I, I think just deep down it was it wasn't even a hatred because I think that's one thing that I've like always gone back and uh, where I used to go back and forth with which was like I don't hate her like Mm. you know if you came to me for anything yeah yeah, I'll give you a hard time but I'd end up giving it Mm -hmm. to you I'd end up I would always be there and I think my love for you as any sister and to almost agree like a mother Mm -hmm. it ran so deep very very like so deep Courtney will be there for me through anything literally I would call, if I was arrested, I'd call Courtney before I called my mom. Literally. So don't think I was like yeah. a bad, like, <laughs> yeah. no, it was more so a eye roll. I've got to call Courtney. Mm-hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Or that kind of thing. And I think for me, it was, and this is why I knew it was more like as much an emotional and historical thing as it was a spiritual one, because it was a deep love there. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't connect with it. Yeah. And I think that's one thing I've always said in my glowing and growing journey that I've had to work on in every area, which is connecting with this feeling of love. Yeah. You said that the other, at the book launch. Yeah. Thing? Like yeah. actually connecting with this feeling of being in like feeling love, mm. feeling, receiving love from people, but also like truly demonstrating that I love yeah. people and it was really challenging with you because it's like I know I deeply love her why doesn't she get this but then all of my actions it's like my f- heart is feeling one thing but my mouth is saying something yeah, yeah, else yeah. and I'd get frustrated my with myself me, but my body we don't sing R. Kelly on this podcast sorry R- sorry sorry thank you very much rewind so, <laughs> <laughs> so During that summer, we got to a place where we're going back and forth, we're going back and forth. But the reason why that was like the hardest season of my life as well, genuinely, I would say like even over my depressive Mm -hmm. episodes, you going through what you had been through, Mary, I don't think I've ever felt my anxiety. I think that's when I started to feel Mm -hmm. anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I'd gone through um, like depression, suicidal thoughts, even a bit of paranoia. Um, But you, what, what that stage brought out to me was genuine anxiety yeah genuine anxiety because I think um and I think this is where I could tell there was a deep love there that also needed to be repaired in its manifestation Mm -hmm. because you were going through this like this period of thinking Courtney doesn't like me and I was just trying my best to be like I'm a different like to show you I'm a different person now I really want to be there for you but it's like you weren't receiving it and that's when I started to realize like I have been the villain in your story for such a long, or a villain Mm -hmm. in your story for such a long time. And even though I've kind of healed over my pains, it doesn't mean that you have to go down the same manifestation. You can have the exact same wound and it heals differently. Differently, exactly. But also your journey to forgiving me would be very different. And so even though, I, I wouldn't say I had forgiven myself, but even though I had changed and I was ready to kind of repair our relationship, it doesn't mean that you were open mm-hmm. to, to doing I the same thing. And I was finding it very hard because you were yeah. bringing in like very like deep conversations and stuff. I was finding it very hard to see myself as the villain in your story. Right. Cause I, right. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. I was like, and I think you weren't the villain cause you weren't trying to actively be, Yeah, it was more so you were something that was taunting me mm. as a figure, as what you represented, mm-hmm. which was the person that oh, to me in my eyes, our parents love most. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Or the one who I wish I kind of had your life, You're not right. up until when I left yeah. you. Well, you can have that bit. That's yours. <laughs> reclaim it, whatever. But actually our, when it comes to our childhood, I felt like, that's the life I wanted to live. That's mm. the person I wanted to be, mm-hmm. right? Um, the way you behaved, the way you looked, the way you acted, it was kind of like, why couldn't I have been her? And the thing is, those were things I just could not control. control. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like you weren't trying to be the villain. Mm-hmm. That's probably why you were struggling to see yourself mm-hmm. as a villain. It's like, it's not you. Yeah. It's the things that have been said 
by others around you who have used you as an example mm. to kind of hurt me. Right. Why can't you be more like Mary? Oh, look how pretty Mary is. Mm. Look how Mary acts. Courtney what? is absolutely beautiful. No, I know. I Yeah, I've gone through, like I said, glowing growing journey. But it was very much a, uh, you weren't the villain as mm-hmm. in you weren't trying to be, but people were using your face to yeah. mask the ugliness mm-hmm. that was hurting me. Right. Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's the bit that was pissing me off. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, okay, now I've healed over that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me actually repair our relationship. And the reason why I say that this was like the phase of my life where I started to experience anxiety and I was frustrated a bit because it was like, I would leave the house and all I could think of whilst I was at work, all that I could think of when I was with friends was my sister's gonna like off herself. Like she's mm. gonna unalive herself mm-hmm. every moment of every day. Yeah. And that's why I even started working closer to home. My first studio exactly. was around the corner from yeah, our yeah. house. I remember I got into an argument with mommy one day and I called you and you just, you were like- Flew home. You, three I, I don't even think I got to finish the finish and I was like, I was saying, you were home. like Literally, and I, <laughs> and my, in my heart, it was just yeah. like, you know what? As much as I've been offloading this false mm-hmm. responsibility of eldest daughter syndrome, now I actually wanna be here. Yeah. Now I actually, need to be present for you and I'm so glad that I had as much as it may have not been done in the best way Mm -hmm. I'm glad I had had those three years of being at uni to kind of not only reclaim my own time but also become aware of how I wanted to distribute it and when I came back I think I had the wisdom and the emotional maturity to be able to discern between false responsibility and you actually needing me Mm -hmm. and in that moment I realized you actually needed me right and so I made myself available and I think I wasn't accepting the fact yeah. That I needed you. Yeah. I just But yeah, so like Mary, I would get, you know, a random call I'm at work or I remember I was at a retreat and I was with like oh gosh, Nissy, yeah. Mandy, Haley, and it was like Mary's going through a really hard time. That was the first time I heard God's voice actually. That mm. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um that was my second suicide attempt when I had to go to hospital for it. And um we were in the waiting room and I was like, it was just me and mummy. And the thing is, because me and mummy are very friendly, I sometimes found it hard to be with her in such serious situations because yeah. me and mommy are very like we're gonna laugh about something <laughs> the key key was like, strong we're gonna we're like we're gonna joke about something but in this situation there was nothing to joke mm. about so i was like where's courtney where's courtney <laughs> every every time mommy's phone would vibrate i'd be like is that courtney is yeah, she coming is she here literally. and then we were in um the waiting room it was dark and I was wait saying, so before you get to the waiting room story this was literally i was at a retreat in a different part of England this wasn't even in London yeah. and I had to talk to my friends who one um I had to talk to Nissy Nissy T if you watch her here on YouTube or on socials and she was just like do you want me to drop you to the hospital and so me Nissy Mandy and Haley were in a car and we were I think she crossed so many speed limits she was like I need to get you to the hospital and so as soon as we got there I was just kind of like thank you and so just thank you to my friends Honestly, but even having you. my back and kind of understanding some of the stresses that I've been under at different points in my life but genuinely I would go like I would have panic attacks and nightmares mm. of you in that moment right. so when I then got the call that you need to like come up your sis I don't know if she'll be here tomorrow I'll just like yeah fly there and I remember I got there sorry yeah so you we were in the waiting room say your bit I was in the waiting room and this is I think one of the only times I've heard God but I was laying there and I heard I vividly audibly heard you say my name I, you were like Mary I'm here mm. And I jumped up of, out of the seat. And mommy was like, what is going on? And I was like, Courtney's here. She's here. She's here. And I went into the corridor and I was looking. I was like, where is she? I literally just heard her call my name. And mommy was like, she's not here. She's 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 in the car. She's on her way, but she's not here yet. I was like, no, I've heard her. She's here. She's coming. Blah, blah, blah. And then I remember I had like a sense of calm. And I was like, at that point, I didn't think I realized that it was God. But at that point, I was like, oh, Courtney's coming. I'm, I'll be okay. Yeah. She's coming kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And I just remember getting there and like... I think at that moment, I was like, no, God, something has to shift. Like something has to change. I can't have really great friends and be doing well and then lose my sister because I was a bad sister, Mm -hmm. you know? And I remember like asking God for forgiveness. And then as soon as I got into the waiting room, I kind of just sat there with you and then I took you into my Mm -hmm. arms and for some reason, our mum was videoing this moment. <laughs> it's very like... Mommy, she's a special person. <laughs> she actually is such a special person. But literally, person. I had her in my arms like this. And we were just rocking back and forth. And I was just praying. And I remember praying so much that I started to cry. Uh, you see it back to what I was saying. Courtney doesn't cry. I don't cry. So I was crying. And like... I don't think it was like... I was praying from you for the place of... It felt like I was almost holding... 
I don't know. It, it just felt like the prayers that I was saying, I didn't know the words to say, but I was really begging God to just preserve you. Mm. But also just, it felt like I was also praying for our relationship to be like healed, for your life to be saved. And I think it was the genuine sense of as much as what we like, we've been through what we've been through. I love her. Mm. And I think the overwhelming emotion that made me cry was love. Right. And I think that was one of the first times I connected with that emotion of, wow. oh my gosh. I love this person. Wow. Like I love her. And the idea of her leaving makes me so upset. And so I remember I was staying in the, the I was about to say the hotel was definitely <laughs> the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was staying in the hospital overnight and like, I I like held you and I'm not a physical touch person, right? Well, at that time I definitely yeah. was a physical, I was not a physical touch person, but I remember like holding you and just making sure you're okay. And I feel like at, after that moment, it was like our relationship mm -hmm. was on the up and up. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was hard. Like, I, like I said, I would have nightmares mm -hmm, of you. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it would genuinely torment me. Literally, and I would have yeah. a vivid image of my head of what it would look like. And it was so interesting that when they called, when mum called, was like your sister's thinking about, you know, unaliving herself in this specific way. And yeah. I was like, that's the nightmare mm -hmm. that I've been having. And I was just like, I was genuinely tormented by that image. And it brought me so much anxiety. But then I realized, what the heck? You must have been going through so much worse. How would you say we kind of took the steps towards healing our relationship as sisters? Because now we are friends. I mean, the other day you told me I'm in your top two best friends. She wasn't number one, which really... No, yeah, you weren't number one. I wasn't number one. Sad. Exactly. That's okay. I just wanted to... Actually, I think I made it to top three. I don't even top think three, I was two. Yeah. <gasps> My mother is one of them, so she can't be upset with that. Yes, it's great. Anyway, so I just, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've been able to make it to the stage where not only are we sisters, but we're actually friends. Like we're one, some of the closest friends. I think I tell you everything yeah. like, and it's not even just that. I think it's the awareness of Mary loves me. I love Mary. And we can kind of identify that this is the issue, but it's kind of me and you against the mm. issue. Um, And there's something our mom has always told us, which is because we are the only like, siblings yeah. like full siblings that we have that like there's a special bond between us and mm -hmm. I think it's not even just blood I think it's also the life experiences mm -hmm. no one knows me like you know me and yeah. vice versa um and I think it's it's been trying to kind of tap into this depth of sisterhood which is just not sisters by name mm. but sisters by action yeah. and like connection and I think that's where we've had to cultivate the friendship mm -hmm. it would be easy to kind of rely on biological sisterhood to kind of tell people we're close-knit you know yeah. that's my sister mm -hmm. but we actually had to go on a journey of cultivating sisterhood it was like making a friend. friend it was literally yeah. like making a friend as if like we didn't know each other because also yeah. you had come back from uni a very different person very. but when I decided to go from kings to where I go now, I turned into a very different person Definitely. because I was no longer allowing myself to be in your shadow. Yeah. So we were now just two very, very different, different people, people to what we had ever grown up with. So it yeah. took a lot of work for us to, not even a lot of work, to be honest with you. I think it kind of was a lot easier. It was a lot thought. easier. I think because both of us individually had done a lot of like soul searching mm. and a lot of healing i went to therapy you went to therapy mm -hmm. a, a lot of praying a lot of like identifying what are the issues mm -hmm. what are the feelings what are the memories um and then also like a lot of self-regulation mm. in the sense that we were able to be like okay what was my fault what wasn't my fault um what does this person need to actually apologize for what irks me mm -hmm. about the other person and is it is it something I should actually bring up? Would it be mm -hmm. wise? I think uh, we grew a lot in wisdom yeah. in our approach to each other. Um, and I think that th it was a, a long process in the sense that there would be ups and downs. We would get into an argument. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time we had a big blow up. Both of our parents were there. We were kind of like, what the heck? We just shouted each other we across at the living room. Shouting. <laughs> but it was kind of like I was exhausted and it was small things that kind yeah. of bring up old wounds. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, okay let's figure this thing out and I think even till now we still have normal sister to sister yeah. like spats where it's mm -hmm. just like oh you shouldn't have done this mm -hmm. or whatever but I think we deal with it in such a more healthy way mm -hmm. because we're not bringing so much baggage yeah. to it and it's we're not holding it's a lot easier holding, to say sorry now yeah and we're not holding on to well you did this mm -hmm. back in you know 2008 <laughs> it's like, like let go let go literally <laughs> please um and so I think we've also gotten to this stage where 
we've been able to have really hard conversations with each other. Mm. And I think it's come with you. I, I, sorry. The biggest thing that has helped our relationship is me no longer mothering you. Like I, I genuinely think eldest daughter syndrome and me being in that position of mother is what was bringing the dysfunction into our relationship because it was, I couldn't both play the mother and the sister role. And so we kind of had to be like, you know what? I can't mother you anymore. Mm -hmm. And as much as it would bring me anxiety to be like, okay, Mary's out, but I don't know where she is. And I don't know what time she's coming back. I couldn't then text you and be like, Hey, when are you coming back? Mm -hmm. Cause you're just like, no, you need to leave this. This is no longer your area of operation. Like, step off and mm-hmm. i think that was what was causing the dysfunction and i commend you for that because we live just the two of us in the house yeah so if i was out and i didn't tell you where i was it's not like you could be like to mommy where's mary yeah do you know what i mean yeah it's just just you yeah and I, th- I think even our parents came to that understanding before i did mm-hmm. it was actually very hard for me to abdicate that role yeah um our parents came to really like i remember once our mom or our dad was like to me why are you so worried about mary i was thinking don't you even dare <laughs> because of you mm. <laughs> like i'm mm. so worried mm. about her because of you yeah, like yeah. if no one worries who like who's, do you gonna, get worry? what I mean? yeah, who's yeah. gonna worry um but then i like they were just like mary's not i think it was our dad she's like mary's not your child yeah and i was like well, it's very convenient for you, you to say that. that now, isn't it? Because I feel like I've been raising her my whole life. Yeah. But then it was also like, as much as you want to hold on to this whole, you know, I've been raising Mary my whole life, it feels like um, that wasn't something you should have been doing in the first place. Mm. And as much as you were grieved, you also need to let that thing go. Yeah. Right. You need to let go of the control. You need to l- let go of that role fully. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and even though it feels like it's your default mm-hmm. to set into that, You can't do this anymore. I feel like that your differentiation from being my mom and my sister also helped my relationship with mommy as well Mm. and dad as well. Mm. It was more like, they're not my friends, Mm. even though they are, they're not. Do you know what I mean? And it it kind of let me take like that friendly sister thing that I had with mommy and kind of like shift it towards you as well and give her the respect that she needed as well. Because I could be cheeky to mummy, yeah. but now and you used not, to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Let's put that out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I was very <laughs> cheeky to mummy because she was my sister. Like in yeah. my head, it was like literally Mary would say some things to our mum that I'd be like, "You wouldn't even say that to me." Yeah. Like, you, what? Yeah, yeah. Because she take it because yeah. she, well, she's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I remember I came back from Gideon. I would hear the way you talk to her, but I was thinking, if it was me, <laughs> my mum would have flung me off the balcony, like. Oh yeah, that was that was another frustrating thing. But then it, I understood that uh-huh. the dynamics had been shifted. Yeah, because it was just me and her for three yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was we've been through stuff. We have, and I think also distance has made us a lot stronger now. Hundred percent. Because I live on the other side of the country. We have yeah. to actually work to. Yeah. It's not like we're in the rooms next to each yeah. other anymore. Where oh, I see you in the kitchen. Hi, hi. Yeah. We've spoken to each other today. It's fine. Kind of thing. Now it's like oh, I haven't called Courtney, let me call her. Or Courtney would drop me a message like, hey, you're right, call me when you're free kind of thing. It's just making that effort. Which yeah. And it may sound helped. really yeah. simple like to some people, but genuinely as two siblings that grew up close but didn't grow up intimate, mm. that oh, yeah. is a big, like a really big yeah, yeah. deal. I think we just kind of made it as if like, oh, we're in the same house, so we must be close. Yeah, when, inevitably. Like, and you I know, know when I've she got goes your back, to the toilet. You know I've got like, my back. I know when she baths. I know like... Yeah, so of course I know her of course more than I know anyone her. else. And it's like, but you don't know me on the inside. Mm. So I'm glad that you let me be your friend. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah. And you're a good friend to have too. So... <laughs> thank you for listening to us having this conversation um i just want to say i i'm really proud of you i really am like the person you've become and grown into i know it hasn't been easy but you really inspire me like you really do mary because i think you've been through so much and i know what you've been through because i too lived it Mm -hmm, do you get mm -hmm. what i mean but also like even past that as an individual you've been through so much and you've worked so hard to get through it and i just i do admire your character i admire your um history and your approach to people because even even though maybe deep in your heart you may have been thinking you hate me you weren't malicious do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and I think that's just a, a great attest, like a great testament to how loving of a person you are. And that's why when you decided to become a midwife, I was like, this is so fitting because you are probably the most caring and nurturing person I know. Like when I think about 
genuinely a lot of the affection that I feel like I didn't receive from a lot of the women in my life I received from you mm. like there would be times where I'd be wailing in bed because I'm genuinely like having a panic attack and it would be you that would come and hold me and I just remember thinking like this 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 love that I got which is why I dedicated you to like the book to you feels mm. like this love and this affection and this care that you showed me even when it was really hard genuinely did save me like I remember when I did have my you know unalive attempt um suicide attempt and it was you that called the ambulance and it was you that was like making sure that I was okay and it when everyone kind of wanted to give up on me it was you who was even like in times when it was hard and I was in the wrong it would be you who advocated for me and as my younger sister you didn't have to mm. and I think even in times when I wasn't that for you you were that for me and mm. I think even though that's a big thing to shoulder as a younger sibling you did it well Thank you for being my sister. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a lovely. And thank you for coming on the podcast. Ew. So I hope that wait, this comes. Oh, yeah. Let me give you. Let me it's say, okay. They, let it's me, fine. It's Courtney fine. Thank Daniela. you so much for. Um, I love her. She is amazing. Courtney, you have actually blessed so many people's lives and you've blessed mine as well. Look at us holding. Can you see the, the affection? The I used affection. to hate you. Wow. You have blessed my life. Like tremendously on so many levels i have a lot of respect for you <laughs> if you laugh i'll stop sorry yeah okay fine <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have a lot of love for you on many different levels like in like different realms i have a lot of love for you a lot of pride for you i am so proud of you i will be the first Thank person you. to be she too is. in your trumpet like ask anybody that that might, she is celebrity like <laughs> come on everybody this is my sister and i am proud to call you my sister and my friend honestly so thank you you're welcome and thank you renee for letting me be the host today yeah um so honestly thank you so much uh for listening to this episode thank you for um plugging into the sisterhood our sisterhood story um as biological sisters and our friends but also um we hope that this has blessed you in some way if you would like to join the conversation and the sisterhood please follow us on all social media platforms our handles will be down below individually but you can also follow at to my sisterhood on twitter facebook hey facebook <laughs> that? instagram is what i was trying to You're say right. <laughs> it's all facebook tiktok yeah. Yeah, it's all meta isn't it tiktok linkedin literally search to my sisters to my sisterhood and you will find us and also sign up to the mailing list so that you can get weekly glow and grow tips we hope that you enjoy the episodes that are to come in a couple of weeks you'll be hearing from renee and her two sisters mm -hmm. so that would be very very fun and as always keep glowing and growing <laughs> we're Renee and Courtney your online sisters and we're on a mission to help women across the world become the best version of themselves through the power of sisterhood that's why we've written to my sisters a guide to building lifelong friendship from working out how to achieve your dreams to setting boundaries and managing expectations, this essential handbook will show you how to fully embrace the power of friendship and community. Packed with practical advice and personal stories from our decade-long friendship, we'll give you all the tools and advice you need to find, make and keep lifelong friendship. Two My Sisters is available now online and at all good bookshops.